wants to speak may speak in the public session for three minutes. Sign up sheets, speaker in back, and you can't sign up after 6.45 p.m. There are two people so far who signed up, Jim Hall and Carl Pucci. So would you two come up here and give your three-minute speech, please? Hi, my name is Carl Pucci, and I'm here to speak about a proposal now before the board to create a master plan of balcony enclosures at 1056 Fifth Avenue in the Carnegie Hills Historic District. The 12 apartment building built in 1949 in modern style currently has 30 of its original 34 balconies enclosed. The building currently has a master plan that dictates window replacement and AC penetrations, and this master plan would be an addition to that existing document. While the Landmarks Committee of the Community Board was not able to come to a resolution, there seemed to be agreement that this proposal was appropriate for the building's current state, and certainly an improvement over the hodgepodge of existing enclosures. There were, however, several questions about the properness of balcony enclosures in general. This master plan is not a license to enclose balconies, but would be a required guide for the appearance of all enclosures in the future. Given the preponderance of existing enclosures, with some over 50 years old and in need of replacement, and the likelihood that the remaining four open balconies will soon request enclosure, a master plan would help bring appropriate consistency to the approval process and to the building. I therefore respectfully request that the board pass a resolution in favor of the proposed balcony enclosure master plan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Dan Garotnik here, uh, Council Member Dan Garotnik. I wanted to be here uh, tonight to give a very brief report about uh, some of the things that I've been up to. Um, I, uh, I know the rules, so I will be brief. Let me start off by noting that uh, last month I joined uh, uh, the Speaker of the City Council along with a number of other colleagues announcing the City Council's new budgetary rules that will encourage transparency and accountability. Uh, it is going to create an online searchable database of all groups that are applying for and receiving discretionary funds from the City Council. The database is going to be up and running next year, uh, and all funding will be searchable by organization name or keyword and the sponsoring council member. Uh, I have long been a supporter of all the efforts to try to put all this information out online so you can see uh, everything that you need to see about who's applying, who's receiving funds, the rationale, uh, and all of that. And so this is a big step forward for the council. I'm very glad that uh, uh, we were able to get that done. I also wanted to note that um, we had some progress on teaching assistance. Um, this is a big issue for this neighborhood. I want to thank Community Board 8 and uh, Judy, uh, even in absentia. I don't see her here. Uh, but we, about a year ago, worked with the UFT and the Department of Education to uh, bridge a dispute which helped keep teaching assistants in the classroom. Teaching assistants, for those of you who don't know, are uh, funded by PTAs to be <coughs> add as extra hands uh, in the classroom. Uh, and I was very pleased that this past Monday, uh, the UFT and the DOE again for another year uh, renewed that agreement, which will keep the teaching assistants in the classroom uh, starting in September 2010. Uh, under this arrangement, the teaching assistants will be able to continue teaching, uh, and the DOE and the UFT will work to create uh, additional um, mechanisms for these teaching assistants to become full-time teachers at some point in the future. Uh, I, I really think that these are important. It's an important element for the parents who are struggling so much in the, in the public schools in our neighborhood with the overcrowding, uh, wait lists. Life is simply too difficult. To, uh, to take the teaching assistance away uh, would have been a real problem. I also wanted to note that uh, my office has gotten a few complaints from residents on Fifth Avenue uh, about the noise emanating from summer stage concerts. Um, you all are familiar with summer stage. It's the free concerts that take place in the summer. Uh, they are at Rumsey Playfield. Uh, and uh, my constituents and your constituents of this board uh, hear the noise, particularly if they live on Fifth Avenue. Uh, so I have encouraged Summer Stage to try to take additional steps to reduce the amount of noise that is coming from the concerts. They have installed and are installing new speakers 
that will do a better job of directing the sound at their concerts and should make them less of a problem for Upper East Side neighbors. Um, yesterday I went for a visit, uh, both to Summer Stage, to take a look at the new speakers as well as to the apartment of one of my constituents who had uh, been um, particularly vocal about his concern and so we went up and we actually tested the speakers remotely. We had the Summer Stage people in his apartment with the people controlling the volume of the concert uh, out at Rumsey Playfield, and I'm very pleased to report that I think that these new speakers are going to be a good thing because uh, he, his apartment was one which was particularly bad, and now uh, they thought that the response and the result was phenomenal. That was what his that was his wife's uh, words. So I'll take them. All right, questions. Go ahead. On the assistance, because I'm on that committee, we spent a lot of time on it. Thank and you. And I by the just way. saw. I don't know if it was today or yesterday, I guess, in the paper, an article about that. But the article that was there said that they couldn't teach. Now, you said they could teach. Yeah, no, no, no. I did not say they could teach. They're teaching assistants. Right, right. Officially, they are not teachers, and that is an important distinction. Right, because if right. they were teachers, then you wouldn't be able well, to do I, I, this I program. I thought you said they could No, teach I said extra teach. hands in the classroom, um, and that's their their task and their role. I just thought maybe the article the I'm No, no, I'm glad you pointed it out. I'm Hannah Fisherbaum from the Department of City Planning. Uh, today I'm here to talk about um, a tax amendment with regard to car sharing. I don't know if you guys are aware of, of what car sharing is. The two major companies are Zipcar and there's also a Hertz program uh, for car share. It's a lot like a car rental, but it works on an hourly basis. Um, the vehicles are unattended, they're av available 24 hours a day. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, I, I think you know, Zipcar has been in the community for long enough that I hope some of you are familiar with it. Next. So why are we doing this text amendment now? There's sort of two, two things that, um, that we wanted to clarify. The first is um, when we wrote the zoning resolution, there was no such thing as car sharing, and it's very ambiguous in the zoning resolution. And so the first thing that we wanted to do was to clarify the term. And the second thing that we wanted to do as we clarified the term was to really better define where we think this would be appropriate in, um, in the different neighborhoods across the city. And so we're looking at Manhattan, we're looking at Staten Island, all obviously very different conditions. The first are individual benefits. It allows access to cars, easier access to cars for individuals. Um, it can replace, uh, it can even replace a car. We hope that this is something that we can have your support for. And I'm um, happy to answer any questions. Are you saying that 20% would be reserved? No, not at all. 20% would be allowed to. And then <laughs> after that, it really depends on an individual garage, what they can, what they decide with zip card. This isn't um, a policy that's trying, that's uh, requiring a certain amount of car share spaces, it's saying that they would be allowed if there is a market for it. Does that? Right, but that 20% then is not available to the residents. It would be, it, it depends management. on the management of the individual garage at that level. The, the management would have to make the decision as to whether they would be interested or whether they're even, to start with, approached by one of these car sharing companies and whether it makes sense for them to reserve spaces for car share or not. The whole thing is that people want to, want to do this and wanting to do this and they maybe even get rid of their own cars, so it would be something they want to do. Uh, David? Anyone else from the public? I'm sorry. Okay, David, then Rita, then... My, my question is, and maybe it's a concern, reflects something of what uh, this lady asked about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming that the fees the garage earns from Hertz and Zipcar are greater than what I pay to have my car there. And I'm wondering what your estimates are, or have you done any estimates of what the impact is going to be on the current renters, you know, the, the current purchasers of, of services of garages? Am I going to see pressure on me? Mm -hmm. Uh, as a result of this, you know, with, with otherwise reasonable. That's a very good question, and I actually, I, I hope that we do have numbers for that, and I'm going to ask you if I can get back to you on that, because I don't have them with me today.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charles Cooper, second vice chair of the community board. I'd like to welcome you all to Manhattan Community Board 9 installation of officers. Um, it is said that the community board is the pulse of the community. And if you want to um, gauge the temperature or stance of a community, all you have to do is engage, engage yourself in a community board meeting. And I see that is true for the community board represents the community and all that it stands for. And by members of the community board staying involved, the community itself benefit. At this time, um, I'd like the elected officers to come down. At this time, I'd also like to introduce um, a man that needs no introduction. Um, so many, he's a legislative giant, but on the community board, we are honored to call him a friend. Our elected official, these assemblymen, Keith L.T. Wright. It's my pleasure to uh, join you here to have the privilege of being able to um, being able to install the officers of Community Board 9. I just want to thank the Community Board, all of the Community Board members, not only the members but the Executive Committee for their service, uh, uh, for all that they do. Community Boards are the alpha and the omega, the bedrock, the first line and the last line of defense of any community. and. Uh, and they are they can be your best friends in the whole wide world officers come forward a little bit please come forward raise your right hand i am glad to see you raise your right hand i say your name do solemnly swear to uphold the constitution of the united states the constitution of the state of new york the Charter of the City of New York. And to keep up all traditions, customs, and mores of the Harlem community. So help me God. You are now installed. Mr. President. <laughs> I'm asking too much. <laughs> Let me just say this. I, um, I got a chance to um, see uh, Brother English in, in action, and I think he's going to be one of the best chairs Community Board has ever seen in a long, long time, and I wish him well, and I know that everyone will give him his support and, and, and their commitment because uh, no one that wants to be chair of a Community Board takes it lightly. I can tell you that right now. Mr. Mr. Chair, would you kindly raise your right hand? Aye. Aye. To solemnly swear, to solemnly swear, to uphold the Constitution of the United States, to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of New York, the Constitution of the State of New York, the Charter of the City of New York, the Charter of the City of New York, and all customs, traditions, and mores, all customs, traditions, and mores of the Harlem community. Of the Harlem community. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs>